Welcome back to International Scale Modeler. Today we're going to do a quick review on a kit, uh, on a make of brand of kit that I've never done before. Um, it is the uh, Avalon um, Antonov AN4AN2W. Now, apparently, if I remember correctly, I think these are all short run kits from the Avalon. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, so don't um, back one of this. This promises to be a quite a good kit. It's a very different subject, it's not something I've seen uh, before. Um, it does look quite funky, I've got to say, but uh, let's have a look and see what's in the box. So the Velon 148 Antonov AN4 slash AN2W. Uh, now, as you will see uh, from the box up, that's quite a wicked looking aircraft. Um, it really is a nice looking aircraft and a great floaty thing as well. Um, and uh, this is quite a different subject. It's not something that I would, you know, usually pick up. It's this is a prize in one of our uh, group builds. Um, but it is something that I wouldn't normally pick up, but it, I've got to say, I really do like that, that biplane thing, it's really funky. Uh, Volom kit, now I've never done a, a Volom kit before, never opened one, never looked at one. Uh, so it will be interesting to see what's inside the box, but the box art's nice. What else we've got on the box, we've just got a couple, another uh, scheme here around the side. Looking around the edges, nothing else um, at all, but uh, it's a plain white box on the back as well. So let's have a look inside the box. I'm quite excited to have a look, see what's in here actually, I must say. So we'll get it all out. Now I believe, uh, I may be wrong on this, but I think Volom do a lot of limited run kits, and this may be one of them, I'm not 100% sure. But let's start with this bag here, which seems to have the most bits and bobs in there. move all this out of the way right so we have uh, what would be known as the main sprue we've got the fuselage here now straight away the engraving on it the uh, the lines are very fine They're very nice indeed let's see if we can get you in on this as you can see there look okay it's very fine indeed and uh, it goes right round to the underneath. Uh, lots of minuscule uh, rivet detail. I'm just trying to see if that will focus in for you. There you go. Um, and you can see there's a lot of rivets there. <laughs> thousands upon thousands of them. Um, so very nice indeed. So the level of, uh, level of detail on the uh, fuselage is, is excellent. I must say I really like that. And they've got these curved props as well. You know, like these feathered, almost like feathered props, uh, but, but obviously they're not. Um, there is a small amount of burring on them. I've got to say, props are always really good, good indicator of you know how good a kit is because of the burring on them. But there, ever such a slight amount on the fuselage itself. No, I think we're we're safe on that one. 
Um, you've then got uh, several other types of uh, props on here. So you can have a choice. There's obviously going to be several different um, types that we can build. If you have a look here, so you've got these, these square paddle type things. Um, we're never building one of those before. They do actually look like paddles. Uh, but uh, you've got these, like these, what I would say, feathered props, and then you've got some uh, sort of slightly rounder props, and then you've got some finer props here that you just see by the difference in the shapes and everything. Uh, so those are, uh, are great. You've got these aileron um, uh, joint things here as well, plenty of those. But just looking on those, there's a little bit of burr on those. So, I mean, each little piece is just going to require a tiny little bit of touch up, but I don't think there's anything there to be scared of or worried about. But I am impressed by the level of rivet detail on the, the, on the fuselage itself. It's very nice indeed. Uh, so, let's go on to the next one that was in that bag as well. Uh, so, on this, we've got obviously the, the wing sections. Uh, now, I would imagine these are. It's going to be quite big, you know. Looking at that, you put those two together, that's going to be quite a size. That's not a small aircraft because they're either side. So you've got one of these either side here. Uh, now, have a look at, if you have a look on the box, you will see that they've got this uh, incline into them, uh, dihedral. Uh, but it's not like a, a normal dihedral. So uh, it's. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that goes together. You've then got the. Yeah, they're in two halves. So you then got the what looks like the tail planes as well. Or oh, these are the no, so these will be the underside wings because they're going to be considerably shorter than the main ones. The wheels themselves are two piece wheels, as you can see, um, and they do have some nice markings on there. Do you have some tire markings on there? Now, obviously, because it's got those, it means it's going to give you the option to do uh, a, 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 a land based uh, aircraft or you've got the floaty thing as well um, but overall I mean the level of detail on there there's there's a bit of um yeah so there's a bit of mold release agent on here that uh, so I would definitely suggest on um, giving it a good soak and a wash before you start building on this right let's open this other bag here I like the way the bags are stuck together I do like this as I say, I've never seen one of these kits before and um, never thought about posting. They're quite a specialist manufacturer, and so I believe. So we've got this sprue, we've got the floats on. Um, and again, uh, what strikes me straight away, uh, obviously you can't pick it up there at the moment, but the level of detail and riveting on these floats is excellent. Now let's see if I can get this right up to the camera for you. And hopefully you should be able to see that. But everywhere on there is rivets absolutely everywhere gorgeous um, excellent level of detail there and again on the underside of the floats um, you've got very faint rivet detail there as well as you can see there awesome excellent level of detail uh, so that's very nice indeed so those floats are actually going to look pretty damn awesome look at the size of them you know that's a good six inches you know that's what I tell my wife anyway but um but yes yeah, so they're uh, they're very very nice indeed I'm quite impressed with this kit so far I might have to invest in one of these uh, you've then got what I would imagine to be the uh, top side of the wings let's have a look see how it fits to the fuselage yep there'll be the top side of the wings okay on the of these on here um, you've then got the floor of the interior again lovely lovely uh, as you can see there lots of riveting and detail as well very impressed with the level of riveting on this um, you know I'm surprised these kits haven't had more more said about them you know even on the cowling here the engine cowling again covered in riveting really nice now the, the one thing I'd say about this riveting is it's really really fine okay so it, it, it is that fine that literally you could not use the Vallejo primer. Definitely not use the Vallejo primer on this aircraft. In fact, I would go so far as to say I would use uh, Tamiya. Uh, I sometimes I use Tamiya XF80, I think it is, as a primer because it's very, very thin. Um, and I would definitely suggest you do that on that. You use a paint as a, as a base rather than one of these specialist 
uh, primers and everything, which are, tend to be a little bit thicker, or micro fillers as they sometimes call them. But uh, that definitely needs to be, be wary of that because you will fill that with primer and paint. So be very careful of that. But apart from that, very nice indeed. Uh, we then got the last uh, sprue, which as you can see, has the engine on it. Now, that's the one thing that's not really, it's lacking in a bit of detail there, as you can see. And um, the molded detail isn't brilliant. Now, you would actually see, looking at the picture on this, you would actually see, let me just show you guys here. Okay, you will actually see quite a bit of that detail as well by the looks of it. So, it might be a thing you might want to get an aftermarket part for that. Um, I'm sure there probably is one in, around. But I would definitely want to put a little bit more detail on that. Or you could add your own or scratch build it. Um, you know, it depends what how, how what skill level you are and everything. Uh, looking at the rest of it, you've got the steering columns here. Uh, they do have a bit of uh, flash and a bit of burring on the side. Again, nothing that a, a scalpel blade can't take care of. Uh, you've got the instrument panel. Okay. Not bad. Not brilliant, but not bad. Uh, I've seen worse for, for more money. And then you've got the cockpit walls by the looks of it there. Okay, so again, some more detail that you can pick out and uh, play around with. You've got a door there as well. Uh, the seats, uh, I just think they're you know kind of bulk standard bucket seats there, four of them. Oh, well, there's two padded seats and two bucket seats, so I imagine you've got some passenger stuff as well there. Uh, but again, on the uh, the cargo door there, again, lovely, lovely level of detail, lots of riveting. And as I said, the wings here, you can see a lot of uh, mould release agent in inside the depressions in here so it needs they will need a really good clean before you uh, decide to start building that so let's have a look at some goodies that you get with it well let's do the glass first uh, we've got a big chunk of glass here as you can see uh, now looking at this there doesn't seem to be any distortion at all let's have a quick look uh, as you guys can see there there's there's kind of no distortion at all whatsoever, so that's really nice. Being 148 though, it's a big bit of glass because obviously it's a big fronted cockpit on this, as you can see. So, um, and there's a couple of side windows and some portholes and everything. The glass itself has got rivet detail on it, um, which is nice. Um, but I would say that let me just move out so you can get a bit of idea of it. I would say that it needs a good polish uh, with the Tamiya compounds. Um, because the glass just seems a bit uh, dirty, uh, if I say, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to say misty, I would just say a little bit, tiny bit cloudy, and I doubt if this will pick it up, but uh, it's you know, just a little bit on the cloudy side. Uh, so it definitely needs a, a polish up, I, I would say, um, so it'd be worth the, worth, worth the time and effort in that. It's not gonna be hard, it's a nice big cockpit to, uh, piece of glass to, to mess around with so I don't think that's going to be too hard to work on but just a little bit of work needed on that I feel uh, right so next we've got the uh, the decals here so let's have a look inside here cool, that's, that's fit tightly into the bag <laughs> very tightly indeed oh. let's just get these out oh and we've got a little surprise in there as well Ooh. right so the decals uh, are I would say in between, uh, cool. I would say they were satin actually with just a slight gloss on them. So there's just that side of, uh, glossy side of satin. Uh, the decals are, they're not cut very close to the actual picture. I've got to say there's quite a lot of overlap on them like you would have seen on a, a lot of old uh, FX um, uh, de decals used to be like this where they used to have a lot of overlap. I'll see if you can pick it up. I doubt if you will. Uh, just try and get that bit there. You can see there's quite a lot of overhang from the edge of the star to the end of the decal. So, which is, you know, personally when you get stuff like this, it's always best to, to get the scalpel out on the ruler and try and get them as close as possible because it, it, they do they do show up, you know, they do show up. So, but apart from that, they all seem in register. There's not a lot of them, obviously, uh, but what there is seem reasonably nice. So. Now, onto the little uh, little bits of uh, extras. We have a little fret of photo etch in here. And on this you have, uh, you have seat belts and uh, some other 
couple of little clasps there. I'm not sure what they are. Uh, but you do have a couple of pairs of seat belts. Uh, you've got something here. I would imagine it's probably for the instrument panel at some point. Um, and then you have these little uh, propellers. Now, I'm not sure, but um, these might go inside the floats. Um, don't quote me on this. We'll have a look when we have a look inside the instructions. Uh, but there's a couple of little propeller blades there. So, um, so yeah, so it's nice that you get that in there. That's a nice little touch. And then you do have, I'm just going to pop that straight back in there. And then you have a little, another little baggie, which has some resin parts in. So uh, let's have a look inside here. And uh, the resin parts that we have, we have uh, an excellent instrument panel. Um, and uh, that, that's great. That's a great little extra. You then got, um, <coughs> excuse me, some engine exhaust by the looks of it. So these bits that go on the on the sides here, here and here, you've got these as separate resin parts, which is really nice. Um, and you've also got again another. You've got an intake there that will be the oil filter, I'm sure. Nice level of detail on that. And you've got some other little odds and sods. I would imagine these are control levers for inside the cockpit. So let me just uh, get this. First, get this oil filter up to you, so you can have a good look. In okay, case so there's a reasonable level of detail on there, that should. There you go. You have to do it right round for you, but. Okay, uh, then you've got this resin part. Now this is nice. Uh, see this control panel here. A lovely lot of detail in there. So loads to pick up on that. I mean, it really does stick out as well as you can see. Just from there. So loads and loads to pick out there. You could spend a good good hour, two hours on that on that instrument panel alone with the level of detail. And then you've got obviously the other intakes there. We've got an intake and an exhaust there as well. Again, lovely level of detail. Um, something that you don't have to drill out as well, which is nice. Um, but they look quite nice indeed. So they'll fit lovely on the side of the aircraft. So I'm just going to pop those back in the bag. You don't want to lose those, that's for sure. But it's nice to have um, little goodies and a, and a kit that you just buy without having to buy the extras yourself, I think. Um, so it always adds to the experience, I always say. So the instruction manual is an A5... Um, sheet, uh, well they're A4 sheets of paper folded over into A5 size. Um, it looks like they're in colour which is nice. Um, we've got a little write up here about the uh, Antonov um, AN4, uh, quite a bit of write up as well. Some technical data which I always like to see on write ups about aircraft. You, there's only a couple of other uh, manufacturers that do that. Uh, but going through, we'll just take that bit out because this looks like this is going to be a separate bit on its own. You've then got the colour schemes. You've got the USSR Navy Air Force Black Sea from 1970. And as you can see, it's got these, these feathered style uh, props on there. You can say it's an all blue, solid blue completely, which is the one that is actually on the box. Now, there's a bit of a difference between those two blues. Uh, I would tend to go for the box art blue because that would look nicer than a nice solid navy blue like that. Um, we'll have a look see what paint call outs they are. Uh, oh, they've got them on the back here. We've got Humbrol, a Gamma, Model Master, Guns, and uh, you've got the FS FS numbers as well. So uh, you've got quite a lot to, to choose from there. Obviously, the Guns is my um, paint of choice at the moment. So plenty there. Um, back to the car schemes, as you can see. Uh, we've now we've also got the Marine Air Force Baltic Sea from Poland in 1980. Um, and that's the 2W and you can see they've got the, the green, the dark green over the like this turquoisey sea, sea, sea blue uh, colour. Uh, to be honest with you I actually like this one, I'll probably go for the Polish one if I was going to do this. Um, but that seems just seems a much nicer contrast than this solid solid blue and believe me that will be easier to, to make look good than that will. That would be a challenge for sure. So let's go on to the rest of the instructions then. Uh, we've got uh, something that I like, a numbered sprue map, which is excellent, uh, which means you can take everything off of the sprues, tidy them all up, lay them all out, and then build away to your heart's content without having to stop, clean, glue, stop, clean, glue, stop, clean, glue. This is how I like to build if I can. So let's go on through the details here. We've then got obviously more sprue maps here. So all the sprues are numbered, which is excellent. Details themselves are very basic. The instructions, as you can see, um, it's saying that uh, they want you to glue one side in straight away. 
um, and then glue the other fuselage, put the cockpit together. The cockpit's quite small, um, really, uh, when you look at it in comparison to maybe the cargo hold. A lot of side seats here, fold down seats by the looks of things. Um, so put that together, obviously you're going to do all that. It says to put the porthole glasses in. Now, with things like portholes um, up to and about this size, uh, I would say you can get away with using a bit of crystal clear. And because uh, sometimes these, these, you always find that these tend to never ever fit properly, or they're proud, or they're they're, they're depressed. They never fit flush. Okay, the, the, those portholes. So what you can do is you can get a lump of this on your on a toothpick, put it in the hole, swirl it around, pull it out, and that'll leave um, a window. That'll clear clear, um, and it'll leave a nice window for you, and it won't and it will be flush with the aircraft. Maybe that's a tip for another video. But anyway, it's saying put the put the glass in, put the portholes in there uh, at that stage. It then it then it tells you to how to build the cockpit. <laughs> oh no, well we we where are we? Oh my god, hang on, we've got stages twelve and thirteen. For, okay, right, I tell you, uh, let me just no that even that's wrong. All right, well we're going to forget the order of the pages. I'm just going to look at them as we go. So forget everything I've just said. So you've got your sprue maps, okay, we've done those, but you then got a bit more sprue maps and obviously the resin parts and the metal parts uh, saying there. And then it tells you how to build up your cockpit uh, from that page. And then we go to this page on this sheet um, and it continues to tell you how to build up the cockpit and the interior. How the, uh, oh, that's a nice little touch, I like that. Shows you a view from the cargo space into the cockpit. Um, and that's where you've got to put your resin parts by the looks of it. Uh, then tells to bit how to build up your props depending on obviously which aircraft you're going for. Um, in there and there. Um, and uh, then we skip to uh, this <laughs> this piece of paper. Then you put the uh, the half, fuselage halves together. And then we skip to uh, another piece of paper. Hold on. There we go. And then we put the wings together. Okay, so it's good that you can build this in stages. It's got some proper stages. So wings together uh, with the ailerons and everything, depending on on uh, how you're going to build this. And it says observe the flatness of the wings. So be sure the wings are flat. Uh, and then you've got obviously these aileron uh, hinges and everything on here. Um, and then it's saying some add some adds, looks like a brace for the wings for the the wings that go over the top, and they should just slot on there. Then. We go to another piece of paper, which is, what's that, 18? So we're missing, <laughs> oh, 19 is its own page, there we go. And then it says to put everything together. Um, and then from 19, uh, we go to, uh, this is a lot of fun, uh, not that sheet, I think we've done with that sheet now. So 19, uh, and then 20, um, then it's saying you've got to add the struts and everything. <clears throat> and then you can put the floats together, put the struts on the floats and everything. Uh, I do like those floats. Those floats are really tasty, I've got to say. I think it's an excellent looking plane. Uh, I really do. Uh, and then we go from 21 on that sheet to, that's 21, so oh, 22. So we do go back to this sheet again. Um, and then it's telling you how to put the props on, line them all up. Couple of uh, uh, obviously the uh, air intake for the um, for the engine. One of the intakes there uh, for the engine. One of the resin parts goes on, um, and then we go to number my god twenty three. I think we can just stay on this one now. Twenty three, and then you've obviously got the exhaust that goes on. This is another resin part, um, and then we've got some cross members in on the struts and things like that here. Uh, the reinforcements it's saying. Um, I, I think that really looks nice. I really do think that looks nice. And then you've got finally <laughs> number 25. You've got a um, like a cross section view of the plane, um, and it's saying add to. I think it's telling you here what the dihedral's got to be and everything. Um, 40, 4, 4, 4, oh, Christ. That's going to be fun. Um, I think that's actually the angle for the, the floats. I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, that aside, that does look cool, doesn't it? Um, it really does. So that is the uh, very, very easy to understand and easy to follow 
instructions. I think they're absolutely wonderful. I have nothing bad to say to them whatsoever, apart from uh, put them in the bin. But uh, no, apart from that, it's a great looking plane um, aircraft. I will say one thing though, just looking at this here, uh, I will say, we'll come back to this camera, um, I will say that when you um, attach, before you attach all these wings, which happens to be on this part here, I would definitely spray, uh, spray the underside of the both wings, uh, because once you put the floats on, you're knackered as far as that goes, but definitely the, the top, the top wings here spray the underside before you put the put them together because otherwise you're gonna have a nightmare same with the main reinforcements and and braces here this part here you need to spray those first to make sure that you don't get anything over the other spray because it's gonna be really fiddly and you could get runs and things like that so this is one of those kits that you spray in parts and then attach and then touch up where need be at the end uh, that would be my recommendation on that so there you have uh, the uh, Valom 148 Antonov AN4 AN2W. That's certainly a first for me, a Valom kit, but um, very, very nice detail. I think that's a fun build and it's definitely a different build and it's definitely a different subject that you don't see much of. So uh, I would rate that actually an eight, eight and a half out of 10 just for its pure difference, differenceness. <laughs> uh, anyway, but that's me for today. So thank you very much. Speak to you soon. Bye bye.